This is Audible. Chapter 35 The Barkin's phone rang at 4.03 a.m. Principal Barkin picked it up and said, <laughs> Barry, this is your father, former Principal Barkin. Am I waking you up? No, said Principal Barkin. Don't lie to me. I can hear the sleep in your voice. Is something wrong? asked Principal Barkin. Do you know what today is? It's... It's April 1st, also known as April Fool's Day, and you are sleeping like a fool. You should be up writing your April Fool's power speech. Uh, I wrote it last night, said Principal Barkin. Then you should be up practicing. Okay. Planning your pauses. Okay. Putting power into your voice. Okay. Ensuring that every student knows there will be zero tolerance for April Fool's pranks. You know, Dad, said Principal Barkin, some people might say calling a person at four in the morning is an April Fool's prank. How dare you? This is not a prank. I am not pranking you right now. I have never pranked in my life. That was a joke, Dad. A joke or a prank? There's a fine line between joke and prank, Barry, and you're stepping right up to that line when you accuse your father of pranking. A pranking principal. Just like your grandpa, Jimmy. You know he once... Uh, I better go practice this speech, Dad. Then go! Bye. Give Josh and Sharon my love! Barry Barkin sat on the edge of his bed in the dark. That was my father, he told his wife. He sends his love. <laughs> said Mrs. Barkin. Principal Barkin couldn't get back to sleep. When he closed his eyes, he saw Miles Murphy's face. That little prankster was probably planning something. Principal Barkin decided that his father was right. His father was always right. He turned on his bedside lamp. At 6.03, Principal Barkin, showered, shaved, and full of oatmeal on toast, pulled into his parking spot behind the school. He activated his new car alarm and walked up the steps to the rear entrance of Yawnee Valley Science and Letters Academy. Barkin sniffed. It smelled like cows this morning. Must be a strong wind blowing in from the farmland. Barkin entered the school. In the dark, on the way to the light switch, he bumped into something large and hairy. I don't remember any of this, he mumbled. Barkin flipped on the lights. It was a cow. Barkin almost laughed. April fools, he said to the cow. Principal Barkin had a list of suspects that was exactly one kid long. Apparently, this was Miles Murphy's idea of an April Fool's joke. Too bad Miles didn't know his principal liked to get school early. Principal Barkin had plenty of time to lead this cow out the back door and down those... Principal Barkin put his hand on his principal pack. Fact 586. That cow couldn't get downstairs. Fine, this was fine. He had plenty of time to squash this April Fool's joke. The earliest students wouldn't be arriving for almost an hour. That was plenty of time to hide this cow in his office. This way, cow, Principal Barkin said to the cow. The cow didn't say anything. Soon, Principal Barkin was behind the cow, pushing. Then he was in front of the cow, pulling. The cow didn't move. Move, cow, said Principal Barkin, now behind the cow again. That's when a second cow, curious about the commotion, rounded the corner. Two cows, said Principal Barkin. This prank was more elaborate than he thought. Barkin wasn't sure he could fit two cows in his office. Maybe he could stash one in the faculty bathroom. A third cow ambled over. Barry Barkin began to get a terrible feeling. He tiptoed to the corner and peered around. No, said Principal Barkin. No, 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 no. He ran down the halls. He saw more cows. No, no, no. No, 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 no. Cows in classrooms. No, 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 no
This was bad. This was very bad. Barkin needed an idea. Some way to salvage the school day. He needed a place to think. A place away from all these cows. He ran up the stairs, pushed through more cows, and opened the door to the supply closet, his sanctuary, his fortress. He turned on the light. No. A cow was chewing on a mop. It was the master stroke. Chapter 36 At 7.45, Miles and Niles crossed the parking lot and joined a throng of students amassed on the lawn. Principal Barkin had a bullhorn. He was barring the entrance. Later, students would agree that Barkin's face had never been so purple. It looked like his neck held up a screaming bilberry. I repeat, form an orderly clump. What's going on? asked Holly. Yeah, said that guy, Scotty. What's going on? What's going on is that you can't come into school right now because... because it is on fire. Panic, screaming, was on fire, was on fire. A small fire that is out. Remain on the premises. Everything is safe. If it's safe, why can't we go inside? asked Miss Shandy. Um, because there is a flood. Luckily, the flood put out the small fire, but now there is a lot of water. Remain in a clump. The school day will commence shortly. It smells like a cow, said Stuart. What? No, that is just the smell of burned things that are now wet. When something is on fire and then gets flooded, it somehow makes a cow smell. Somewhere in the art room, a cow mooed. That sounded like a cow, said Holly. Ridiculous. What is more likely, Holly, that we had a fire and a flood, or that there are cows in school? I guess the fire and flood? Exactly, Holly, exactly. There's a cow in the art room, Stuart said. He had his hands cupped against the window and was peering inside. Stuart, step away from the building. There are six cows in the art room. Chaos, laughter. Students, all students, Principal Barkin says, step away from the building. Stop looking through the windows. There are cows everywhere, Stuart said. Bossy came up to the window behind Barkin. Well, isn't this something, said Holly. Another cow, said Stuart. This is like Cow City. Bossy's breath left a thick coating of cud on the glass. There is nothing remarkable happening, shouted Barkin. I think the cat's out of the bag, Barry, said Miss Shandy. Leave. Go home. Stop looking. Go away, Principal Barkin said. School is canceled. Mayhem. Cheering. Chapter 37 Miles went over to Niles' house for a celebratory breakfast. Cereal and toast with three kinds of jam and scrambled eggs with onions, all washed down with a big glass of milk. It was delicious. But the prank wasn't quite finished. At about 10.30, Miles and Niles returned to school. They found Barkin behind the school, where he'd gone with his son after the students had left that morning. For a while, Josh had tried to push a cow out the rear exit. It won't go down the steps, Dad. Of course you won't, Principal Barkin had said. Haven't you even read the booklet? You're not helping. Go home. He'd called his wife to pick Josh up and spent the next couple of hours sitting. Niles, am I glad to see you? said Principal Barkin when he saw the pair approach. Miles, I am not glad to see you. Unless you're here because Niles can prove that you put these cows in the school and he's here to turn you in. I didn't do it, Miles said. That's what you always say, said Principal Barkin. You should put that on a t-shirt and then I will wear a t-shirt that says, yes, you did. Principal Barkin, said Niles. Miles couldn't have done it. Barkin stared at his school helper. Why not? Because Miles spent the night at my house. On a school night? We were studying for Miss Shandy's test, Niles said. Test? Principal Barkin exhaled faintly. 
School canceled on a test day. And election day, Niles said. We were supposed to vote for class president. Principal Barkin's gaze went fuzzy. It looks like the cows are still here, said Miles. Of course they are, said Principal Barkin. They can't go down steps. Doesn't anyone read the booklet? Hey, maybe you should call your brother, said Niles. Isn't he a farmer? I can't. They're all branded B. They're his cows. Oh, said Niles. So then, shouldn't you tell him? No, no, no. Bob has a big mouth, and you boys wouldn't understand. Thanks for coming, but I'm afraid you can't be of much help, Niles. And Miles, you can be of even less help. Actually, said Niles, we think we figured out who did this. We think we know who did all the pranks. Barkin snapped upright. You do? Yeah, said Niles. We think, well, we think... We think it was Josh, said Niles. Josh who? said Principal Barkin. Josh Barkin, said Miles. Josh, my son Barkin, said Principal Barkin. Yes, said Niles. That's insane, said Principal Barkin. Is it, said Niles. Think about it. You would have access to your car keys, and the keys to the school, and even the locker combinations. Maybe Josh is the one who framed Miles with that pie catapult. I mean, we know Josh doesn't like Miles. Well, nobody likes Miles. He's a prankster. But what if he's not? Barkin hesitated. But, no, Josh couldn't have. He was at Cody Bertiler's Nature Scout Outdoor Jamboree last night. On a school night, Niles said. Well, you boys understand, said Barkin. It was Cody Burr Tyler. Miles smiled. Principal Barkin, Miles said. Cody Burr Tyler doesn't even exist. No, that is insane. That is insane, said Niles. We went to his birthday party. I bought that guy a present. I met some kids from St. Perpetua the other week, Miles said. They never heard of him. But then, who'd I give a present to? Niles asked. Who'd we all give presents to? Who was wearing that football helmet? Unless... I mean, Josh was basically the only kid who was not at the party. No, 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 no. I have the invitation to the jamboree right here. See? From Cody Burr Tyler. Barkin pulled out a card from his principal pack. Dear Josh Barkin, this is your good friend Cody Burr Tyler, inviting you to join me in my annual Nature Scout Outdoor Jamboree, a camp out on the night of March 31st. For 100 years, this event has been held on the last day before April, which unfortunately falls on a school night this year, as an opportunity to renew our virtue and respect each spring. I hope you can make it. I promise we'll get plenty of sleep and my dad will get you to school on time. Respectfully, Cody Burr Tyler. Niles took a look. Red ink. He drew in a slow, tragic breath and shook his head. I hate to say it. But this could be a forgery, Principal Barkin. Josh was the only student to fill out my mid-year wellness survey in red. For once, Barkin didn't go purple. He went pale. Excuse me, boys. I have to make a phone call. Earlier that week, Josh Barkin had received an invitation from Cody Burr Tyler. But it hadn't been to a jamboree, and it hadn't been written in red ink. It was written with a blue Bic Velocity 1.6 millimeter ballpoint pen and mailed by Miles Murphy on March 23rd. Here is what it said. Dear Josh Barkin, what's going on, dude? Guess what? Congratulations, because you have been invited to join Cody Burr Tyler's Secret Pranking Club. But hold your horses, man. You're not in yet. If you want to be in this club, then guess what? You'll have to prove yourself by spending the entire night in my secret HQ on a school night. Spend the night in my treehouse on March 31st. At the dawn of April 1st, carve your initials on the wall. Then you are in. Warning, we will be watching. If you show up at dawn and pretend you've been there all night, we will see you. If you try to write your initials before dawn, we will see you. And then you will be out forever. 
How are you going to pull this off? That's your problem. Make something up. Tell your folks you're hanging out of my nature scout jamboree or... Wait, why am I giving you ideas? You think of something. Destroy this message as soon as you read it. Eat it or something or else. Cody. It took a brief principal-to-principal call for Barkin to verify that Miles and Niles were right. Nobody named Cody Burr Tyler was enrolled at St. Perpetua. But at home, Josh Barkin swore Cody was real. Okay, so I wasn't at his jamboree, but I couldn't have moved Uncle Bob's cows. I was spending the night at Cody Burr Tyler's secret HQ. I even carved my initials on the wall with the date I'll show you. And so Principal Barkin followed Josh into the forest. But while a perfect treehouse takes hammers, saws, and six weeks to build, it only takes a sledgehammer, a delicious breakfast, and a couple of hours to dismantle completely. But... Josh Barkin stood at the base of a sycamore, looking up at branches that held only the beginnings of buds that would soon bloom bright red. I want you to walk out of this forest, back to our house, and up to your room, said Principal Barkin. You are grounded. And although it pains me to say it, you are officially on probation at Yawnee Valley Science and Letters Academy. But you can't put me on probation. That would mean... Yes. That would mean you are ineligible for student council. When we reschedule school election, Holly Rash will be running unopposed. Josh turned his back and muttered, Nimbus. But Principal Barkin wasn't finished. And, Josh, he said, I certainly can put you on probation. I can do anything. I am a principal. Principal Barkin straightened his red tie. He'd had a pretty bad day. But that was a pretty good power speech. Chapter 38 The best way to get cows down a short flight of stairs is to build a ramp by covering the steps with a few sheets of thick plywood. It's also the best way to get a car up a flight of stairs. By the time Bob Barkin showed up in his truck and built just such a ramp, Miles Murphy was already asleep. It was the earliest Miles had ever gone to bed, including sick days. After Miles left school for the second time that day, he'd gone straight home and found his wagon waiting on the front porch. There was a present inside. Wrapped in green with a yellow ribbon, he opened it up in his room. In a shoebox, wrapped in tissue paper, was a sash that said, School Helper Helper. He tried it on. Maybe it was just the exhaustion, but he liked how it looked. Miles Murphy brushed his teeth and got into bed. He put his pranking journal underneath his pillow. The sun streamed through his window, but he didn't pull the shade. Miles Murphy was a cowboy, a cattle rustler, a pranking legend. And nobody knew it, except himself, and Niall Sparks. And that was good, and his bed was warm, and it wasn't long before Miles was sleeping the best sleep he'd slept since he moved to Yawnee Valley. Somewhere in the distance, a cow mooed. This concludes the reading of The Terrible Two by Mac Barnett and Jory John. Text copyright 2015 by Jory John and Mac Barnett. Okay, guys, I hope you enjoyed that hilarious book. I hope uh, we'll see. Maybe we can, uh, maybe tomorrow during the Zoom meeting, we can talk about what book you guys want to read for the next couple of weeks. Don't forget to take your AR test over this book, all right? Okay, guys, see you later.